it was uh, around 1987, and there was a priest on the phone with Mother Angelica, and he was representing the bishops, USCCB, and he's saying, now, the upcoming bishops uh, conference that you're going to be covering for EWTN, whatever bishop uh, wants to be interviewed, interview him. And she goes, no. <laughs> I mean, no. Uh, well, it's about Catholic teaching. It's not about some bishop with an opinion, so no. And, she's, and, she, and he goes, well, who are you, is what he asks her. And she says, I, I, own, the, I own the network. Well, you're not always going to be there, sister. To which she says, I'll blow the thing up before I give it to you. That's the spunky nun. That's the tough nun right there. The one who said, I, all I care about is Catholic teaching. I don't care about liberal. I don't care about conservative. I just want to do Catholic teachings on EWTN. Here's another story about Mother Angelica. And I'll get, and I'll get to why I'm talking about her today in a second here. But The catechism. Catechism came out of the new one, 1992. John Paul II. And uh, the convent down there in Birmingham, they got, you know, got a, they got a preview copy, and they were ordered up 150 catechisms they were going to sell until they read it and went, wait, what is this? This uh, gender-neutral stuff? You know, it wasn't man. It was human and all these kinds of things. And so they canceled their order, which sent out ripples throughout the bishop's world and also all the way over to the Vatican. And so the next thing you know, Mother Angelica is on her way to Rome to talk to then Cardinal Ratzinger, later Pope Benedict. And she's saying, look, I'm not into PC. I'm not, in, I'm not into this gender neutral stuff. You know, Jesus was a man. He wasn't a human, you know. And guess what? That's why the catechism is, doesn't have the gender neutral stuff in it because of Mother Angelica. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Uh, and I bring all of this up because uh, as we record this, we're approaching the 41st birthday of EWTN. It was August 15th, Feast of the Assumption of Mary into Heaven, Body and Soul, back in 1981. And somehow this cloistered nun and her fellow nuns, they were on the satellite going to millions of homes with programming. I mean, just impossible, right? Absolutely impossible. And this all began because just three years before, 1978, she walks into a Chicago television station to be interviewed about a book she had written. And she just looks around and goes, ooh, you know, it doesn't take that much to reach the masses. Hmm. Lord, I'm going to have to get me one of these. And then she asked somebody there uh, on the set, she said, how, how much are these things? This one, about a million bucks. Oh, if only if it was a million bucks. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars later, right, is where we are now. But it was interesting, uh, just kind of bypassing the television stuff for a moment. In the early 90s, Jesus said to her, okay, I've entrusted to you the small things. Now let's move to the big stuff. And she's going, the small thing? This has been the small things? He wanted to get into radio, shortwave radio, worldwide radio. And so um, she's going, I don't know anything about radio. And he said, I know. Here we go. So where does she go? She trusts, she trusts the Holy Spirit. She had such trust, this, this incredible nun, Mother Angelica. She finds herself traveling up this mountain, nearby mountain, and uh, at the top, and it's rocky and it's got some access, you know, up to the top, but that's where they're gonna stick their first tower. Because they want to get into places like you know, ultimately Soviet Union, places like that where they're kind of blocked. So this is going to be tower number one of this worldwide shortwave radio initially. And she's up on this mountaintop, and they're going, now this is too tough up here. You know, they, those who were with her. She goes, she sees, she sees St. Michael the Archangel standing there. She goes, Nope, this is where we're starting, right here. None of them realize where they're standing. They're actually standing in uh, in St. Clair County, St. Clair, St. Clair County of Poor Clair's fame. St. Clair, Poor Clair's, St. Clair. Yes, she's. You know that she is the patron saint of television. A woman who lived in the early 1200s is the patron saint of television. Why? <laughs> Why? Because St. Clair, when she was too sick to go to mass, would see and hear the mass on the on the wall of her bedroom. So she is the patron saint of television and computer screens. In case you didn't know that, you know? Back in the late 70s, around 1980, she's recording some 30-minute television programs for Pat Robertson. He wants some Catholic programming on his station. She's recording this stuff, but she has a problem with this affiliate, CBS affiliate. They're about to run this blasphemous program uh, that questions the divinity of Jesus. It's going to be on the network. And she says, you shouldn't run that. And he says, Basically, I don't care what you say, sister. We're running the program. You don't care? Hmm. 
then I'm out of here. Well, there's no other place you can record, sister. Want to bet? I'll just do it myself. And she goes home, and there's a garage they're building that suddenly this garage is being transformed into their first television studio. How do, they know nothing about television. And somehow, somehow, they built a television studio. And they got no money, and somehow money would appear. I, I'm remembering now about this. There's this point where the, the loan's going to be called. They need 50 grand, like tomorrow. And a guy drives up and gives her $50,000 and says, I don't even know why I'm giving this to you. I just, I'm supposed to, you know, it's one of those moments. And this kept happening over and over again. That satellite dish, the very first satellite dish to hook them up so that they could go worldwide. That satellite dish. Driver pulls up, it's on the flatbed truck. Here it comes. All I need is the, this is just a down payment. Need the $600,000 down payment for this. Ah, I'll be all right with you in a second. She goes inside her chapel, looks at Jesus in the tabernacle and says, you have a money problem. Waits for an answer, gets nothing, heads back out to tell him, drive away. When somebody on the phone says, sister, there's a man on his yacht down in the Caribbean, wants to talk to you, reading one of your books. Gets on the phone with him. Love your stuff, sister. Is there anything I can do for you? A couple hours later, she's got $600,000 in, in her account. And the satellite dish is coming off the truck. I mean, impossible. Impossible. One of the nuns that had a vision, a dream, in which she saw a red flame shooting out of the satellite dish before it was even delivered. And when they took a picture of the satellite, guess what showed up right there? It was this red line, this flame, if you will, this eternal flame that EW10 would always be there. I think the very first time I saw Mother Angelica was on 60 Minutes with um, Morley Safer. I, and and I, never, I didn't really watch Mother Angelica until most of it after she passed away, actually, in 2016. But there was Morley Safer doing a 60 Minutes uh, segment with her because she had just, she had this ability that just crawling into that camera right into your soul when she talked to you. And it's it just remarkable. And he said, uh, so what's your budget around here? I, I don't have a budget. Well, what's it cost to run this? And she said, oh, somewhere between $290,000 and $350,000 a month. And this is back in 1985, so they've been up about four years now. And he said, uh, and she said, we never know where we're getting the money. We never know. And he said, now you have to worry about ratings. And she says, well, I don't worry about ratings. Well, you have to, sister. No, I don't have to worry about ratings. She said, Jesus didn't have any ratings. She said, geez, his ratings walked away. She said, when he was telling everybody about the Eucharist, you know, and everyone's walking away, she, he, she said, he lost all his ratings. He didn't care. He looked at Peter and the apostles that were there. Where, are you going to leave too? And where would we go? He didn't care about his ratings. I don't care about my ratings. It is, it's remarkable when you look at her life, Mother Angelica's life. Like, wh where does the inspiration come from? And, and, she, would, and she would tell you that the inspiration... It would come, and she would just react. She wouldn't test it. When she felt she got a message from God, from Jesus, Mary, whoever it was, she just, she just began. And then later, just her natural abilities, God-given abilities, would take over, and she would run it. But initially, she, she would just follow. And she would talk about faith, that famous quote, faith, one foot on the ground, one foot in the air, and that queasy feeling in your stomach. Ever been there? If you haven't, then you're not listening very closely. Everyone, you too, should at times have that queasy feeling in your stomach. Like, am I supposed to do that? Is God asking me to do that? Because, you know, here's, here's God entrusting all of us with something, all of us. And so here's Mother Angelica, and she was just had this beautiful personal relationship and oh, I, there's, there's something just flashed at me. When she was going to she was going to increase the size of the studio, and she would put little flags around the trees out in the backyard there, and uh, and just she and just and those like signage, like this is where it's going to go. And people would say, "Well, who's that for?" Oh, that's for Jesus. You don't think he knows where it's going to go? Well, I, it's okay to remind him because <laughs> we need more money in order to build this. You know, she was just she was something. She'd walk into the chapel with a new pair of shoes just to show Jesus her new pair of shoes. That's how personal her relationship was with Jesus, with God. What's the takeaway from all this? Why am I, what am I talking about Mother Angelica? 
there is something so special, and she teaches us all something so special because all of us should have a queasy feeling in our stomach every now and then because God is asking us to do something. Here's this cloistered nun, the extreme end of all of it, and he's saying do this and this. She has no idea how to do radio and television and satellites and you know, and, and hooking up with a satellite that's going to cost her $60,000 a month just to rent space on it. And then, oh, you want to be on 24-7, sister? That's going to cost you $132,000 a month in rent. She doesn't know where the money's coming from. And she's sending out telegrams and calls, and somehow she stayed above it all. And eventually she had to do something she never thought she'd have to do. She'd ask viewers, listeners to support it. And they did. It's still there. She passed away, of course, Easter Sunday of 2016. When I think about uh, saints, she used, she used to be so critical about people who wrote biographies about saints. She said, you know, they made them so wispy, so soft, so... Yeah. She said, no, saints are tough. T saints have backbone. So when I, when I think of Mother Angelica or look at a picture of Mother Angelica, I see a saint. In fact, when she died... There were those who could smell the odor of sanctity, that special scent each saint think gets. Everyone has their own, but uh, there were those who could smell it, a special aroma around her when she died, the odor of sanctity when God says, here's, here's who I say is a saint. And Mother Angelica had that. And she had that queasiness and that trust in God of just, of doing the impossible of whatever, wherever it is you want to go. I want to show you this, this one last thing, kind of her, when you, when you look at yourself and your own vocation, and you can read it, I can't. I can just kind of remember what it says, which is basically, you're a child of God, and you've been placed on this earth in a, in a certain state. You're in a certain state, and your level of holiness is determined by that queasiness in your stomach. It doesn't quite say that there. But your level of holiness is based on your following where it is God is taking you, and are you willing to say yes and in in following that inspiration? That's how you get holy, just following Jesus, following the teachings, following wherever God is, wants to take you. So let's pray for that. Let's pray for that. I don't know if we have the, the, the uh, slide or not. It doesn't matter. We can just pray together here, you and I looking at each other for that matter. I'm going to pray to Mother Angelica. Because I know she's there, and I know she's listening right now, because she's all about communication. and She's pointing to uh, a saint that's uh, involved in communication, St. Clair, because this is communication, and this needs to get out there about just following Christ and following that intuitive nature of the Holy Spirit in us to do whatever it is he wants us to do every day. Been feeling queasy lately? Let's work on queasy. Send us something to go queasy on, all right? And we'll see you next week. I'm Men's Morning Life.